Oh, hello there. My name is Louis, aka Louis the French Chimonet, and you're watching RSM. Now, on today's match, we are we are uh, looking at one incredible match, which is Jurassic Sharks versus Bombardment Society, and we also have an amazing interview with the man, Mr. Cameron Holzman, to help me out today. Because to be honest, I'm not feeling too well today. If you see weird things going on in my face. Don't worry, I'm not dying. It's just my my muscular problems. So to help me out, in case of, I got my man, Mr. Dave. How are you? You can cancel the ambulance. He's okay now. Uh, I'm doing great, Lou. Uh, you know, I'm excited to talk about uh, Jurassic uh, Snark versus uh, Bombardier Squad. It was a great match. The interview with Cameron was fantastic. Yes. We'll talk about the interview. You know what? Let's start with that interview. So Dave, well, the other Dave, the Dave that's not on the, the, the magical Dave on the editing room. Take it away. Magic. <laughs> oh, hello there. All right. So as promised, we have an interview with a fellow Canadian. Good to see, have some support from Canada here. It's my man, Mr. Cameron Hoseman. How are you today, sir? Uh, I'm doing good. I mean, as good as you can be doing in these weird, crazy times we live in now. Yeah, uh, I'm, uh, I'm one of the brave ones that have to do an hour and a half of transport every day to work yeah. and work 12 hours. So, Love that. yeah, it's a, a yay. All right. So um, that being said, let's go right into it. Um, like most of you know, Cameron is one of the rising superstars, but a rookie on uh, Multiplex. That being said, he has himself a faction. I wanted to start with that. What is it like to have a faction when you're so new to the league? Yeah, so uh, it was interesting. So I joined uh, my current faction last year back when it was the Kingdom. And uh, with the whole storylines thing, the Kingdom was like the heel faction. They were mm. the bad guys. And I made it very clear to Koho going in, uh, it is hard for me to be a okay. heel because I am having too much fun doing this, and it makes me happy, and so being mean is hard. Uh, and so we were like, the whole thing is like, Cameron's the nice guy, and he's here to like try and change our ways. And then, sure enough, now uh, the faction, almost in its entirety, is gone. Uh, everyone except for Koho and I uh, stopped being together in that faction, and we rebranded to being... The Kingsman, I got the shirt on right now, yeah. and we are sort of the new the new face guys. But I like I joined the faction uh, of the Kingdom before I had even officially had my first match because I was friends with Coho and I was like, "Hey, I want you to help manage me. I want to be mm. in the faction." And he was like, "Yeah, absolutely." And so I came in as a rookie with a manager already. And that was super helpful. I think Coho is a great manager. He helps me prep really well. He helps me, like within the match, helps me like make good decisions and stuff. And then now we're a team, and I think it's going really well with him. And then now we've got the Kingsman, who you got me and Coho. You got Boatman, who's another one of our really good friends. Uh, you got Scully. You got Zach Ford. You've got mm. uh, Cameron Redshaw, which means we have two Caleb's and two Camerons in the same faction, which isn't good <laughs> at all. Uh, we've got my good friend Jack, uh, and we've got Doug Castle, and like it's just a great group of guys. We hang out on stream a lot, and like we're just having a good time. And uh, just by curiosity, did the splitting of the kingdom and Kingsmen create any rivalries? Any like maybe KFAB bad blood here? Yeah, so um it's with with me not really. With me okay. I'm I'm fine. Like I wasn't super connected with a lot of those guys, so I'm I'm good. Uh Coho on the other hand is uh is on what he dubs his revenge tour. Okay. Uh so the revenge tour started with uh me and him in fandom as ascendant playing against uh Lucas and Zach, uh, not Lucas, Lucas and Jim as Fu Lucas. Lucas yeah. Um, and then moving forwards, uh, coming over the future, uh, Coho is hoping to in two matches complete the entire revenge tour because the only other person really left that we haven't faced is Rizzy, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I'm gonna say it. Oh. Uh, our uh, Ascendance second fandom match 
is us versus Schizo, who is Rizzi and Ela McKay. So in two matches, Koho ha is getting at least the chance to fulfill that revenge, and I'm kind of just along for the ride. <laughs> hey, it's better having a backseat than no seat, huh? Yeah. Uh, and so far, how... How would you describe your journey? You said you're pretty new. You started with a faction. Uh, where do you see yourself going from now on? Yeah, so uh, technically I joined the fan leagues a long time ago. Okay. There was long, long ago, before there was multiplex, before there was full metal, there was a group known as the Fan Reaction League, uh, which was one of the first fan leagues out there. And I was a part of that for a while. And then just like life got crazy and I wasn't able to keep up with it. So I ended up dropping out. I kind of dropped off the face of the earth for about two years from that group. Um, and then uh, I joined Full Metal uh, a little while after that. I was just like watching, played a couple classic matches, started running classic over there. Had my first singles match there. And then... Very shortly afterwards, I got my first singles match in Multiplex uh, mm. in September of last year. So, like, it dropped, like, literally just over six months ago. Um, and uh, I played that, got a knockout, which is always nice to start. Then played my second match against Tim Burkala, who is, like, one of the, fan like, a big name, but mostly in fandom and not Warzone. Uh, managed to beat him. And then I got into a triple threat match to play my good friend Caleb Bowen, a number one contender. Unfortunately, that match didn't pan out in my favor, but like it was still a great match, and I think I still managed to prove myself. And then I've been with Coho and teams, and that like our first match we ended up playing against James White, who is now in the Schmodown, and Brian Michaels, who is like one of the mainstays, like top tier competitors when you talk about people in multiplex. And me and Coho, uh, we TKO'd them. Mm. And that, like, that, it was a great way to start it. And then we ended up playing in our second match. We played second reel, who are now currently the champions. And we lost by, like, one point on the last question, if I'm not mistaken. And then just this past week, we played against Cult Classics, uh, where I finally got my perfect round, uh, which was really nice. But yeah, I went from like zero to a hundred, having not much to play in a bunch, being in that conversation. Uh, I got thrown into the game of factions event that we had at the end of last season, where the plan was I was I was not supposed to be the kingdom's player in that Warzone match. It was supposed to be Sean Sandberg, who was one half of the team's champions with Boatman last year, uh, but Sean ended up uh, dropping out of that match uh, because he was planning on retiring. And so they went, Cam, you're going to be the one playing this match. And they went, you're going to be playing against Brian. Or not Brian, you're going to be playing against Jake, Jeremy Adams, and Caleb Boatman. And I had only played one or maybe two matches at that point in singles. And that's a, that's a, that's a deep pool to get thrown into. And it was, it was a hard match. I held my own, but couldn't come up with it. But yeah, no, like, it's... It's been quick, but I, I love playing, and so I love how fast it's going. All right. Um, yeah, it's sometimes when you don't plan things right, it just takes a life of its own and grows, yeah. and, and that's that's good. That just means that you got, you got potential, you saw the potential, and you delivered on the potential. So, All right. And talking about potential, uh, I'm like pretty new to, to multiplex. Uh, for those also that might not be more familiar, if, if there is one moment or one match that defines who Cameron Holzman is, that we the, to discover who you are as a player, what would be that match you would suggest? Man, um, that's a good question. I I think like if if we want to see me playing at like my peak level, I think. Cult Classics versus Clash at Demon Head is probably the best, where I got a perfect round, but I missed out on the bonus, and then, uh, like, that was the only question that I missed that entire game, was the mm. bonus question. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think if you want to see, like, me at the most me, though, like, that that very first match I played, which mm. was me versus, I want to say his name is Jacob Pierce. 
Like, like it's not it's not an incredible match by mm. any means. But like I went seven points in round one, I ended up getting a knockout after being given opponent's choice. But like that was one where there was no pressure. I was just there to have fun and have a good time, and because of that, it was it was real nice. And then same with when me and Coho played against uh, Strange Brew, who was Brian and James. It's like we we were the heavy underdogs in that match, and we were like, let's just go out there and try our best and see what happens. And we ended up winning, and it was just like. All right. It was fun, and it's like it's fun playing with my friends, and yeah. Uh, and also, uh, one thing I want to touch upon because this is what I'm realizing: either in Schmodown, uh, Multiplex, a lot of the fan leagues, that there are different types of players, right? You got more of your uh, analytical IMDb type. Uh, you got people who are strong in, in movie plots. Uh, the people are, are stronger just in like uh, character names, etc. What? How would you describe your uh, style of playing? Yeah, um, I, I think I'm definitely a plot-based person. To me, because like, like I like watching movies, mm -hmm. and when I watch a movie, it's easy for me to go, okay, this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened. Okay, but like. I don't always watch a movie and then immediately rush to IMDb and go, oh, who was that? And who was that? And who was that? And I wonder who did the score. Like, that's mm -hmm. not you. my, like, like my, my priority with movies is when I watch <coughs> them a lot of the, like, when I'm not watching, like, specifically for the purposes of studying for trivia, I'm, like, I'm just watching movies because I like watching movies and like the big thing I like about movies is the plot and the characters and the writing and whatnot. So I'm mm -hmm. not in a huge rush to go to the IMDb. So you can ask a plot question, and I'll be like, "Oh, well, I remember. I remember seeing this movie. And I remember that this happened." Mm -hmm. But if you ask me, like, who played this, I'd go, "Oh, well, I know what character you're talking about, but I don't have a distinct memory necessarily of mm -hmm. what the actor's name is or who the director was." So it's like. It's, yeah, it's an interesting like if like if you saw uh, me versus Andrew Barr versus Adam Collins in round three, I got two questions in a row that were who directed insert this movie here. And like mm. one of them was in one of my big strength categories that I love, which is musicals, because I'm like, I love musicals. I've seen a lot of them. And it's like between movies and the stage and whatnot. I know musicals fairly well. But when I go to a musicals question and you go, who directed this musical from the 50s? I go. I've seen the movie, but mm. that's not the information I know about this film, unfortunately. So it's it's a it's a toss up, and, and it kind of seems perfect fitting with Coho, which seems so like again his like uh, soundtrack knowledge and his his yeah. analytical. Coho has dubbed himself. This is his term, not mine, and uh, I'm sorry, mom. Coho uh, <laughs> has called himself a uh, a data whore, uh, which is basically like he is all about knowing the data, knowing who did what in the film. And so between the <clears> two of us, it's it's really, really nice. Like, Koho, like, knows his scores back and forth, especially in Geek, that man, like, infallible. Knows his directors, knows his cast fairly well, knows his screenwriters, which is an insane, absurd thing to know. But, like, that man knows his data questions. That man can just burn through IMDb, and be like, bam, 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 bam. Whereas I'm like, I'm going to watch the movie, and if I don't have time to watch the movie, I'm going to go to Wikipedia, I'm going to read through the plot summary a couple times, I'm going to look at the director once or twice, I'm going to look at the composer once or twice, and I'm going to read, like, the top ten build cast members. Mm. And that's me. So it's like, it's a nice balance between the two of us where we kind of have it all covered, though. Yeah, and it's what you need, right? Because it the team... Uh, league is such a different beast from singles. Singles is, you know, you do your best and you hope for the best. But if you're against two people and they're complete, you better have a complete teammate that really knows your logic, knows your, your weaknesses, knows the way you play, and knows how to, to complete that, you know? Yeah, so, and and, that's, yeah. that's kind of what Ko and I, like, like Ko and I aren't just teammates. We're, we're friends. Like, hmm. we hang out on on StreamYard calls with, like, me, him, Boatman, and, like, a few other people, a cut, like, at least once or twice a week, probably. Like, there was a couple days ago where me, Coho, uh, and a couple other people were up fairly late 
watching like a a music like, like a a musical that's a parody of Aladdin on YouTube. Okay. And it's like we were just like having a good time and having fun. It was like Coho and I like know each other as players, but we also know each other as people, and we're able mm. to when we pick strengths, we're able to go like okay. This is something I know really well, and you can trust me on it 100%, or we'll go, like, I know this, like, 90%, and you can back me up on this. Like, mm. like musicals. Musicals is one of my go-to strengths. I I love musicals. I don't, I don't claim to know everything about them, because I don't. Mm. That has been proven. But if I go, like, 2010s musicals, which is one of the things <clears> that I like to do, if I go that, Coho goes... Cool. We were both alive in that decade. Coho also <laughs> likes musicals. He can help back me up on that. So between mm. the two of us, we're like, we feel good about this. We can do it. And then, like, when our opponents pick strengths, we go essentially just like, how do we feel about these? Do we need to study them? How much? And we we break it up. Like, when we played cult classics, we essentially went, cool. Coho will study Charlie Kaufman movies. I will study 80s John Carpenter movies. Mm. Between the two of us, we have studied both of their categories as a whole. Mm. And, like, that's that's just how it works. Like, like it's an open conversation, and, like, it's just this mutual thing where we both know that we're strong. And then, like, in terms of fandom, because I've been talking a lot about Warzone and not a lot about fandom, because mm. I think I'm primarily Warzone, Warzone for the most part, but, yeah. like, I also like fandom. I really enjoy it. In fandom, it... I, I'm i more willing to defer to Coho on it, just because mm. Coho has been doing this he's longer. Beast, yeah. He is more proven, and he like he's proven that he knows what he's doing in terms of fandom. He's played for the team's title twice, uh, hopefully a third time with it, with me, uh, if things go well. Um, but, like, it's... We're, we're a good match there, because, uh, like, we each have our areas that we're good at, on our own and then we have areas that we're strong at mm. together and those are the ones that we can like just go for and then there's the like coho phantom oscars that is coho's oh, yeah. bread and butter that is what that man lives for i fully defer to him on that <laughs> like when we when we study it they basically go okay here's what's gonna happen we're gonna ask like the pair of you a question and then normally we'll like discuss back and forth and be like i think it's this no i think it's this yeah, da, da, and then like we discuss, and then on when we do, we get to like Phantom Oscars. They just go, okay, we're gonna give the question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a guess, and then Coho will tell me if I'm right or not, and if I'm wrong, he'll give the correct answer. Yeah, like something I realized recently, uh, like Second Rio and a couple other, like it's either hit or miss, but um, communication and trusting your partner is definitely one of the keys to win because you might have all the knowledge, but if you don't know how to communicate that knowledge with your partner, it can go a right. Like yeah, um, there there are teams that their lack of communication has cost them matches, and I think yeah. like I don't know if I want to like a prime example of that. Not to try and like pick on anyone or anything, but like if you watch uh, Light It Up versus uh, the concept, mm. that is a match where they're not talking to each other enough and in the end it kind of costs them the game and you can see in their matches after that they're talking to each other a lot more than they mm -hmm. did in that match because communication is really important like when koho and i played against cult classics in our round two we get fantasy sci-fi koho doesn't love that but i do and we get a question and i go koho i know what it is it's this and if koho fully 100 percent supports me he goes final answer mm. and that's that's like what we have to do if we're not sure we discuss it we talk about the possibility of going to multiple choice or using a repeat but it like it has to be an open conversation because yeah. if you're not communicating not you're not going to get very yeah. far all right now switching up um uh, subject a bit i'm going to put you on the spot i'm going to do a flash round you got two minutes i say to answer my question if you can only keep one member of your faction and create brand new faction as you as a manager, who would you pick? You have two minutes from now to answer. Okay, I think I think I I think I keep Coho. I think okay. the two of us work together really well. He's my partner in both divisions. And like 
he he and I have that communication and we complement each other's skill sets really, really well. And I really like that. And then, sorry, what was the second part of the question? And who else, uh, if you would have to choose uh, 500 people for, uh, or to up to 500 people to create a new faction, who would it be? Um, I... And you can't use I'm, people your own faction. I was going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push away, as much as I love those guys, I'm going to say, like, leaving them aside. Um, I'd want I'd want Andrew Barr. Okay. I, like, he's great, but also, like, he's he's just a really nice guy. He's a really genuine guy, and I like talking to him, and I like working with him. Um, man. Uh, I think Nick Tuig. Nick Tuig okay. is strong in both divisions, and again... Just a super nice guy, really fun, really nice to talk to. Um, man, this is a hard question. You got two people left. Um, I I think I would take Jake. Jake and I are partners in another league, and so we have that like mm -hmm. rapport together. And also, he's just a really great guy. And then I guess if you're taking Jake, you kind of got to take Michael with him. So mm. yeah. I guess that's my list. There's your fa fantasy faction right here. All right. And also, I'm just very curious. Uh, if movies would disappear in a week from now, what would be your three movies to watch to celebrate and do a final goodbye to your, to movies? Man, that's a good question. Okay. Uh, the the easy first one for me to say is, is Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. All right. It's, good choice. It's, it's my favorite movie of all time. It has been since I was... Probably, I think I was like 15 when I started to really, like, I saw that movie for the first time when I was 10. My brother uh, introduced me to it. Like, I'm staying in my brother's apartment and I can see the DVD right over there. I feel uh, so old. Like, <laughs> like, I, like, I was 15 and I just started loving that movie and, like, I fell in love with Edgar Wright. Uh, like, if I were filming this from my own home right now, uh, you would be seeing a Baby Driver poster in the background, nice. but... I'm not at home, so you're not going to see that poster. <laughs> um, man, uh, I'm gonna let me let me look at my letterbox. Let me look at my like top hundred list and see what else <laughs> I would keep. Because if I were to just pick my top three movies of all time, it's it's three Edgar Wright movies. Uh, but it's different, right? Because I, this is a question we use often in Schmodown in Canada with the Schmodown professionals, yeah, and. They keep answering, they, they keep like, I'm not going to choose my favorite movies. I'm going to choose movies that impacted me, right? If, if it's a final goodbye. So it doesn't have to be your favorite movies. It's the ones that you, you wouldn't want to close out with. Yeah. You yeah, know, like like Scott Pilgrim, it's, I think it's the example of like a perfect screenplay. It's a great adaptation. Mm. It does what it needs to. It's visually fantastic. It's really funny. Like, it's, it's exactly what... Ramona's hot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh, like it's like it's exactly what to me a movie I love mm. should be, and like that's why I love Edgar Wright. I love the way he writes. I love the way he paces things. If Last Night in Soho gets pushed back or canceled because of because of this outbreak, I'm gonna I'm gonna die. Um, <laughs> my other two, uh, I'd probably go. I'd I'd say I'd take the perks of being a wallflower. Mm. I that's that's another movie that's in my top ten. It's my number seven. Uh, like, I relate to that movie a lot. Uh, I think it's a fantastic, just, like, slice of life. Here are some characters. Watch them go through life and mm. be weird and quirky. And I'm like, that's that's me and my friends. We are very weird and quirky. Um, and then, man, a third one. Uh. I man, this is a hard question. Uh, um, I'm. We, we don't make life easy here. No, uh, you, uh, you, really, you really don't. <laughs> hey, but that, that what makes interesting uh, interviews is hard questions. Yeah, I. You know what? Yeah, I'm stuck between three. Uh, you know what? No, no. Uh, okay. uh, my third, my third one's gonna be Catch Me If You Can. Okay. Okay. I, I think it's like just a great, fun, stylish story. Great performances from Hanks and DiCaprio. It's my favorite Spielberg movie mm. by a country mile. Uh, 
like it's just fun it's a movie that like made me fall in love with movies it's got great drama it's got great comedy i love mm. it all right and to close out the show uh, if i'm not mistaken you have a brand new podcast going on multiplex you can go talk about it a bit what is yeah. it about um so uh there there's a lovely group uh of people that i've already talked about called of me caleb boatman and caleb coho uh sometimes referred to collectively as uh team 19 uh because we as a group formed when all three of us were 19 i am now the only one that is still 19 i know i'm the youngest of the three you wouldn't tell by looking at us no. um <laughs> um but yeah we we formed I think I think to like sort of explain how this podcast came to be and what it's about, I have to go back to when we formed as a group. And when we formed as a group is over on Take Three. They have a show called Rankum, and we were on an episode about the best animated movie sequels. Mm. Um, and like it was, it was going the same way pretty much every episode does. We're just like, yeah, we like that movie. No, we don't. And then Caleb Boatman goes, "I have a movie." And he's like, I've got the best movie that we could possibly put on this list. And he brings up a movie called Leroy and Stitch. Not Lilo and Stitch, Leroy and Stitch. Uh, yeah, I see the look. It is the fourth, the fourth film in the Lilo and Stitch franchise. There are four of them. And there's also a what? full TV show. Yeah, okay. it's, it's insane. They're on Disney+. Plus. Check them out. Um, okay. But me, like, he says it. And as he's, like, building up to it, before he even says the title... You can see me and Coho realizing what movie he's about to say, and we start, like, getting really excited, and we're about to flip out. And so, like, and from that point on, like, in the middle of that episode, we just became the group known as Team 19, and we ended up, uh, like, some shenanigans happened off-screen uh, in, like nice. in a private message between us during that call. Uh, and we ended up forcing Leroy and Stitch to the number two spot on that oh, list God. as a group. And people were not happy with us. <laughs> but we were super happy with ourselves because of course we are. And like from that point on, we like started hanging out and we started doing stuff. And so what the podcast is, it's basically the three of us talking about stuff like that movie where we're talking about like stuff from our childhoods because we all grew up like like in the early 2000s to now is like when we've been growing up and so we talk about like like our very first episode is us talking about all the disney animated movies of the 2000s i think we may not have talked about uh about princess and the frog just okay. because we think it's too like different from everything else where it's like the 2000s is a distinctly weird <sighs> period for disney just I, I understand properly so you mean you grew up when I graduated high school, <laughs> I feel yeah, so old. Yeah, that's, that's very possible. <laughs> uh, I I have only existed in this decade, Louis. Oh God, or not this uh, this century? Sorry, yeah, this millennium. Um, but like that's what we're talking. Like, and then we have like an episode where we're talking about like like punk and pop punk bands of the two thousands. We're talking about like My Chemical Romance, and then uh, the most recent episode I can remember us filming is we did an episode where we made a list of like the forty essential movies, like to sort of help define us as a group and define like our generation and uh yeah we spent we spent like two at least two hours just like pitching movies to each other and talking about, and having a great time and we're just like laughing and it's really fun it's just like us being ourselves and talking about stuff we enjoy i hope you check it out uh i the name has changed more than once. Yeah. I believe it's going to be on Multiplex as either the Team 19 podcast or the Beanbag Boys podcast because we named ourselves after the movie Good Boys because mm -hmm. we realized that all of us are sort of parallels of one of the characters in that movie. Uh, and also we're a group of three children who are being crazy and ridiculous. But yeah, uh, check and that out on the Multiplex podcast feed. Mm -hmm. I think the first episode drops Saturday as of when okay. we're recording this. All right. Yeah. All right, please check it out, and also do not forget to subscribe to Multiplex it's not, if it's not already done. Please do. You, you got nothing to lose and everything to gain. And same thing for Schmoser North YouTube page. We're getting better. Uh, less than 30% of people watching are not subscribed. I want to go down to zero, so let's do that. That being said, where can we find you, Mr. Cameron? Uh, yeah, you can find me on 
letterbox at C Holzman. That's C H O L Z M A N N. So it's my first initial and my last name. Uh, you can find me. I don't have Twitter, uh, so you can't find me there. Uh, you can find me running Full Metal Classic currently over on Full Metal Trivia. Uh, and you can find me currently playing in Multiplex. Uh, I'm currently in the team's tournament with Caleb Coho as the Clash of Demon Head, moving into the second round playing a team that yeah. I'm not allowed to name because right. their match has not aired yet for the first round. Uh, you can find me and Coho in teams as Ascendant. Yes, it's confusing that we have different team names for different divisions. Deal with it. Um, <laughs> you can find me in Fandom Singles, where my next match is against my friend Jack, who is also my cousin, uh, which mm-hmm. is going to be lovely i bring the man into this league and they make him my second match uh uh yeah i think i think that's about it perfect and you can find me nowhere because i'm going to bed because i'm tired all right well thank you very much uh, cameron for your uh, your time your interview that's some really good insights so that being said on to the main event jurassic shark versus barbarman society all right, so you take it off, Dave. What do you think about it? I thought this match was very interesting uh, as we look at, at it on, from the outside. Obviously, these are teams that have made their way, way into the tournament and are mm-hmm. both playing very very well this season. Obviously, though, you got to look at Boat, Boatman, recently crowned champ, champion of fandom. Coming in as a champion it always helps when you when you're feeling no matter what yeah and also let up apparently zach is not a rookie <laughs> <laughs> so i've been told <laughs> but apparently um jurassic sharks did not know that uh, zach is not a rookie all right <laughs> so let's start with round one my dave go ahead so i thought so this was a <clears throat> very a uh, very competitive ra- round i i found both teams score scoring very high. Not a lot of really big big misses. Misses though. One of the ones directors obvi- obviously missing that second second question is is tough. Curly Sue. Who knew that? I, I I've never never heard of that movie. To be honest with you. No, me neither. And Lou, that's why we're analysts and we don't play. All these shows. Let's keep talking about the match. Not <laughs> um, I thought the a lot of, there was a lot of very interesting uh, the que- the questions that came up. I thought came from some very interesting categories, um, such a, as you saw family fi- films, MCU, and roman- uh, Sorry, what was the other one that I wrote? Classics. Wrote, wrote down. Uh, uh, coming oh, coming of age. of age was the other one that I wanted yeah. to talk about because those. When you start breaking down certain sections of the film genre, uh, of the film universe, you can kind of break it down into a bunch of different bubbles that a bunch of different genres all fall in, and they'll kind of cluster together. Uh, family films, coming of age films, and even M- MCU to an extent, all kind of uh, fit in that like same age range. Range and interest to me, so it's interesting when we see a lot of these questions coming up, and I think it really does help uh, help people of a, of a certain age because these would have been movies that are more more recent and more relevant to their their lives recently, so they're not coming as far <clears throat> back back as someone else might be. But even then, though, you you say that, but at the same time, question four and five, question four is classics. Caleb is only one to, to get it. And then again, Caleb is only the one to get it from coming of age, so he got both of the the opposing opposite the spectrums, you know. That that's true. That's true. I, you know what? Yeah, that that is is a good point. It immediately poked a giant hole in my <laughs> analysis, but I'm glad that's here. Also, just shout out: not enough Book of Eli, I questions. I don't care what people say about that movie. I'm a big fan. And if we can get a Book of Eli question every single match, I'll be happy. 
I would be very happy. It, it, it's it's a really I seen it in cinema. I don't remember much. I, I liked it, but it didn't make that much of an impact. I just seen it once, but I remember seeing it in cinema. Probably way too drunk for my own good. Well, you can check out the the Frenchie watches the book of Eli, Eli Lewis new podcast. <laughs> whoa, 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 okay, no. do do not invent podcasts that uh, shows that do not exist. I have the Frenchie watches. A book of Eli is not one of the episodes. We'll get the book of Eli on there, people. Don't you worry. Anyway, uh, so <clears throat> there's a lot more better <laughs> movies to watch there. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I think everyone played very, very well in this first round, and in teams especially. I think it's so important to play to play well in that first round. There are mm-hmm. so many points up up for grabs with uh, uh, bombardment squad squad scoring eleven. Out of their possible 16 and Jurassic snark only uh getting nine it's mm. a little bit lower than you would expect from a team team with their caliber but i think only being down two points going into that second round is a good thing thing to have but and also like for me to start a round one was really caleb uh because there's like i said two questions he's the only one that got it he he was consistent uh, Zach was good, but missed a couple of times. Uh, it was either like <clears throat> no one got it, but Caleb or everyone got it almost, you know? So it, congrats to, to Caleb to really hold, uh, hold his, uh, his own, because if not, it would not have been nine to seven for, um, for bombardment society. 11 to nine. Yeah, that, that's what I meant. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, let's talk about that for a second. Like Caleb coming, coming in here is proving that he is a phenomenal team Teams player, and I had him on, on last week, and he would not let let me forget that he is is in fact a champion. So I'm going to say it again: Caleb Bowman is currently a cha- a champion. Just let let's all remember that. All right, we <laughs> we, we should uh, do a, a drinking game. How many times you have to say Caleb Bowman is a champion? You take a shot because I thought I think you said at least seven times last episode. You know, I'd <laughs> like to keep our show on the air, Lou. <laughs> Well, okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway. All right. All right. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on. Moving on to round round two. Uh, Bombardier squadron goes first, or uh, sorry, bombardment squad uh, go, goes for, to spin first. What do you think? Think of that that decision when you have the lead. Would you like to put your foot on the gas, or would you like to uh, play from behind? Depends on my opponents. It really depends on my opponents. Um, the how they play, what's their strengths. Uh, I think I would. I wouldn't have a plan beforehand. I would go with my gut instincts, depending on first of all the score as well. If I'm in the lead or not. If I'm in the lead, I think I'd let them uh, go first. If I'm behind, I think I go first. Yeah, and immediately we see some. Uh, this app. <coughs> Immediately, sorry, uh, we see a potential up- upset here. They spin away from crime movies, which I always think is a good idea because crime is just so broad. Because when you think of movies, most movies have some form of crime in them, whether <laughs> it's a, you know fighting, swearing at a police officer, who knows? There's some form of crime. They spin away from crime, but they land on opponent's choice and get sports movies, which I... Or sorry, they land on an opponent's choice and are given are given sports movies. What did you think when uh, when Stark gave uh, Bombardment Squad sports? Um, I, I think the the uh, the judge on Boltman's physique and said to themselves, "Ah, he doesn't do a lot of sports, so probably doesn't watch a lot of sports." Uh, and that was an error. That was a complete error because man, did they kill it? Um, the 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 really. I couldn't say it. Uh, they still kill it, but at the same time, Shark steals the the points. But else than that, like the first question, they get it. Second question, they get it. Um, they get on five. Uh, question five. So three out of uh, uh, out of um, of five questions is still a really good thing. And the way they answer the two, there's not too much hesitation. They seem to know pretty well. It just Sucks that they missed uh, the wrestler question and the Legend of Bagger Vance, which I I couldn't get the Legend of Bagger Vance 
Uh, I haven't seen that movie in such a long time, so I don't blame them. But they did pretty well. Yeah, I I like going with sports because that is a category that I find because of the nature of sports movies, it's very easy to get deep cut on a mm. lot of question, questions. Sports movies, there are a lot, lot of them, but I think there's so many tiny things that can be very easily turned into deep questions. It's mm. a uh, unavoidably tricky category to navigate. And I think it did, did very well. Uh, Snark goes up next. Uh, they also get crime and they, and they take it now, you know, they do. There's really the story here is they do amazing in, in crime movies. They're going to mm. get every, they're going to get all of their crime. Bleh, sorry. Yeah. They're going to go perfect. They're going to go perfect in round, round two here. I believe uh, they went to multiple choice one time. They went to multiple choice one time, I believe. But they go go up and crime movies. You know, some of these were some tough que- questions. And I was again. This is the episode where Dave is proven wrong on his the- theories about crime movies because these guys they did very very well in this category. Yeah, it's uh, it was a murder. It was really a murder when it came. That's to a the crime. crime. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's uh, it was impressive. Um, I I love Kirk. I I've seen him play, but they've struggled in the past. You know, they're they're not the most talked about team. They're not you know usually. And then this is general opinion. It's not necessarily my opinion, but the ones to watch. And I'm starting to feel that people should start paying attention because the way uh, they they went about with the with round two. Uh, really shows that the the improved uh, they are <clears throat> a really really potential uh, winner or at least a team that's gonna make a lot of damage and some upsets you know uh, and they proved it right there. Yeah, and you know going into the, into the third round now we have an inverse of what we had in the fir- first round. Now uh, Jurassic Snark is up twenty to seven seventeen where they trailed going in into the second round by two points. Now they have a, there's been a five point swing swing to the other way. And I think that's very, very impressive. Anytime we can see a team team do that. Uh, Stark, I think did uh, very, very well here with their, their third round. I feel like they, I feel like they navigated it very, very well. Mm -hmm. Uh, But that's not taking anything, thing away from how well, <clears throat> Sorry, how well um, Bombardment Squad did? I thought they, I thought they also uh, navigated some tricky question, questions. Pretty tough, tough. Mary Poppins, for instance, is not a movie I, I, I probably saw it once when I was a kid. I don't remember <clears throat> anything a thing about it. So even that one pointer, I was struggling on with them. <laughs> so uh, all the props in the wor- world to Zach. Zach for getting it. That was the most impressive pull, pull of the night to someone like me. <laughs> now, for me, it's the sorry for the language, but apparently they don't care. Multiplex, the balls on Bobarman Society to, to take Oscar for four points. Oscar is a hard category to begin with. Mm-hmm. We're, we're still talking about round two, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, for a second, I blank. Sorry. <laughs> um, for Oscar, for uh, four points. Uh, already, I, I probably have a hard time answering a one-point Oscar question. Uh, for them to go to the hardest level of Oscars is a really, really ballsy thing to do, and it paid out for them. Um, there are other choices like musical for one, Tarantino for two, two thousands for three, and Oscars for four. Would you have went in that uh, that order, or would you have went differently? Uh for me, probably. Probably not, but when you look at this this team, you look at a guy again. We're talking about him a lot, a lot tonight. But Caleb has shown in the past he's very strong in in Oscars, whether it be fan, fandom or here. I think when you have a guy like that, and Zach's no slouch either. When you have a guy like that, and then you have a strong person who can back up that 
the guy who's good in that category. I think it's very good to take that as your hard, hardest question. Musicals mm. is one uh, is another category that I I struggle with myself. Um, so I wouldn't. Mm. I don't know if I would have taken it, but again, you look at these guys and you look at someone like Zach. These are for their strengths. Tarantino is another. He has a very limited filmography, and all of his movies, with the exception of like Jackie Brown and mm-hmm. Death Death Proof, are just very highly respected. And they're movies that we've all seen. Hey, hey, hey. Jackie Brown is a classic. Don't don't get me started, sir. It's a classic, but if we're talking Tarantino, it's like six, at least. All right, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I know, but I get you, me. This is, but at the same time, one thing I wanted to, to talk about is directly my notes. Uh, there's one moment that Waterpool, and it really speaks to the chemistry of uh, Barbarian Society. Is uh, let's see here the crazy rich Asian question, the three pointer. They use repeats. They're digging at it. There's like they're like two syllables, like is it zoo, zah, zah. and they really were able to dig out and work together to actually get at the end. I didn't think they were gonna do it, but I, that was a hell of a, of a pull. No, that entire time, there are very few times watching uh, a trivia of any any kind. I am so fervently like. Oh my God, are they going to get this? So often you can tell it's like they don't know, or okay, they're just being a little bit of a douche here. But these guys, they were digging deep. And I really appreciated that. I thought the entire time I'm sitting on the edge of my couch, I'm like, oh man, are they, they're not, are they going to do? Because, you know, full, full cards on the table. Uh, I called Bombardment Squad uh, to win. <laughs> to win this match in uh, the last episode of Rays at Multiplex. So I was like, come on, boys. Don't make me look like a fool. Come on. And that was just such a such a great pull. And I audibly – I was clapping during that. And but and this is what I'm, I'm seeing, you know, the, the good teams. Now, they didn't win, but I, I'm seeing the ones that are standing up in the pack are the ones that really do communicate. Or you know have have this this moment of aha I'll trust you if you trust me moments and that's what happened. Sadie didn't go in their um, in their uh, favor, uh, but it was close because like in Sh- uh, Sharks three points uh, question the whole Michael Madsen Tarantino question oh man they were so close to getting it they were off by one but that was also a good example of them really trying to calculate, really trying to, to, to discuss and use both of the knowledges and not just rely on one person. Uh, sadly, there was off on uh, the latest Tarantino movie that apparently was he was in. But uh, yeah, that, that, was, that was an interesting poll too that they almost got. Yeah, and then I think both of these teams, the communication, and they're, sh- they're showing why they can score such high – High points, scoring 27 and 25 five points. Those are amazing numbers to put up. Especially mm. now, this league obviously gets more competitive every, every day, mm. but it's showing that the teams who communicate and the teams who can really dig deep are having these ama- amazing moments. And I think that if you look at uh, the entirety of Jurassic uh, Stars, round uh three sorry when they're they seem very confident in in what they've selected when they have uh crime tarantino 2000 uh uh 2010 wait is that the wrong no that's right uh wait did i get it wrong yeah 2010 yeah yeah sorry when uh 2010 sorry sorry i have a couple notes here to a little peek behind the curtain i think None of those seem like a, I don't know, no one's up. I think they looked very strong the entire t- time. So I f- I think, honestly, and maybe I feel like I'm saying this every week, I think Jurassic Snark may be the team to look look out for going forward. Um, I said they're in the top three. There's uh, I- I'm going to wait for the first thing, the other ones. Uh, 
but right now uh they definitely impressed me a lot more than they did before uh i gotta say i really since i've had the, the interview with kirk uh i really love the guy he's a very cool guy to talk to <clears throat> but i was waiting for him to, to to impress me more you know uh and he really did this time yeah, Kirk is a guy who obviously he hey Kirk, you've been on the show. You've been on the show. Thank you for coming <laughs> on on the show. Uh hope to have you hope you have you back. He's a guy who is sneakily really really good. He's a guy who I didn't wasn't looking at too much in the beginning of this match, but he is someone who I think has a deep, deep well well of knowledge, and I think could be a a big contributing, and I think that is a big contributing factor to his team's success. Yeah. All right. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up uh, everything on our end. Uh, we are very sorry to only cover one match this week, but life happens, and with the state I'm in today, uh, it's uh, it's the best we can do. That being said, we appreciate you watching to the end. By the way, we have a special announcement. Um, not only that are we are on uh, YouTube, but we are now currently on Anchor Podcast. We have two new shows. We have two new shows. Oh, not I, you lie. Uh, two new shows called The Frenchie Watches, where me and a guest dive deep into every movie, a new movie every week. And we also have our man from Schmodown 9 Canada, Mr. Matt, that's talking about his passion, wrestling. We're doing a, re a ringside rewind that we visit older matches from the WWE and the world of wrestling. So take a look on Spotify, Anchor, anywhere you can get your uh, your uh, podcasts. We are everywhere. We're taking over, baby. All right. So where can we find you, sir? You can find me right here at Leaves Me Alone on Twitter. On Instagram at baby baby James Lee's and hosting RSM, the most popular show that comes out on Fridays on our channel. Hey. All right, and you like usually you can find me in bed because I want to be left alone. Get better, Lou. Right. Oh, I'll try. It's been a hell of a day. All right.